What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now I've been playing a lot of Hades lately so I thought what I would do is I would put my first impressions into a video and I would answer the question for those people who are on the fence about the game as to whether or not it's worth your time. So before we go any further, what actually is Hades? Now, Hades is a roguelite dungeon crawler game essentially created by Super Giant. You take charge of Zagoras, the son of Hades, as you try to escape hell and your father. You crawl through chambers which then progress onto biomes where you face different enemies different bosses and over that time you are assisted by lots of different gods and other fellow demonic characters through your time from hell yeah i think that's what they're called so first things first the visuals now this game is i don't think it's an understatement to say for being quite a small studio for being quite a, an old school game it looks absolutely fantastic it's probably one of the best looking games that i've seen in a long time like, it's just such a fresh sharp looking game that i think most people will, will love the look of it i've been really impressed with the music it sort of builds up as you progress through the game and at the end of every, every biome you face bosses and then in between each biome you face a mini boss here or there and the music is just on point i did my very first stream playing this game which you should watch by the way and throughout that whole stream there's loads of people commenting on how good the music was how much it built up especially the boss fights the rock and roll music it's so fast paced it just wants to it just keeps you enthralled in the game and keeps you moving as well because the game's so reliant on speed and precision and moving around the arena the music really just keeps you in the mood keeps you focused on what you're doing which is fast gameplay so on from that the gameplay the gameplay is fast and it's centered around you using attacks to clear clear small chambers of enemies progressing through 10 to 15 chambers then at the end of each chamber you face a boss or two and then you then go on and you finish that biome and you finish the game there's a three biomes in this game in total making each run through well when you start it took me i was going anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour and a half and dying and not being able to finish the biomes even finished like a couple of them but in the end my first ever com full completion run took me about 45 minutes so when you understand what's going on you might spend the first five six seven hours like i did not actually being able to beat the game and i think that's absolutely as expected i think as you go on you also you get a grasp of the game and also you unlock abilities that really help you keep alive, do more damage, you unlock more weapons, and that is another point. So let's talk about the weapon. Now, for being quite a short game, as I've already said, there's quite a bit of variation in this game, and there's six weapons to boot. You have the sword, you've got the spear, you've got the shield, you've got the bow and arrow, you've got the little fists, I guess that's what they're called, and you've also got the, the godlike hell machine gun with a grenade launcher attachment. Yeah. Now, personally, I have actually found the greatest success has come from the semi-automatic god machine gun killer and on that it's been quite a good weapon to use for keeping your distance i think for the beginners it takes that as the last weapon you unlock and it probably takes you four or five hours to unlock that but i noticed that being able to keep your distance in this game really does help and that's why i really struggled personally with the fists with the sword because i just wasn't doing that well at close cut close up combat it just seemed to be i was just getting hit just as much as damage i was doing but on that each weapon it plays so differently and then on top of that you get different upgrades which you can change how each weapon actually plays and again every weapon has four different aspects built in to help modify your gameplay so really there's like 24 ways you can play this game just by changing the weapon types that you have and something the game does really well is basically every time you die and you spawn in one of the six weapons will have a little buff that gives you 20% more currency to encourage you to try new weapons out in the early stages because without that I probably would have just stayed with a sword because usually the first weapon you get is usually the most balanced and I know what I'm like, I'm like okay I'll just try and master this but because I was encouraged to try different weapons out it really helped me expand my arsenal and you'll know, learn early on and these roguelike games they're all about dying failing and getting better and i think going into it with that mindset is every death isn't a failure it's you learning something to get better and i think experiencing it with different weapons just makes you a more versatile player and that's what you need to be for these type of games okay so the combat isn't just the weapons throughout your time you find things called boons now boons are gifts of power shall we say which are basically powers given to the gods that you encounter totally changed the way you can play i actually personally enjoyed the weapons from the, I can't remember their names. The I called him the God of Grapes, but he's actually the God of Wine and the God of Weather or, the, or something like that. And basically what they provide you with was, firstly, for the God of Wine, he would provide you hangover damage, which meant that when you hit somebody, they did you had an after effect which caused more damage. You could back off and let the after effects take its course, which meant that you it was kind of like more of a reserved way of playing, which I definitely think helps in the early stages. 
But these boons are so versatile. You can stack boons on top of boons. You can create different boons which you can like combine. So certain gods like Zeus has all these electricity powers. You can combine them with certain other boons which make them more powerful. It's a really fun way of leveling up. And because the runs are so short, it just it's, it's quite a rewarding thing as well. The boons definitely make the game in my opinion. Now the game suffers from, or it maybe it's not a suffer, it has the one more game syndrome. We've all been there. We plug in a game, we play it and we die and we just think, god damn it. I need one more game of this. And it's not like Call of Duty where you jump in and one more game is 5 to 10 minutes. One more game is like 45 minutes if you actually finish a run. And it definitely has that. I've been playing it and sometimes before I know it, like 4 hours has passed and I've just done like 3 runs. Or I've done 2 runs and I've died about 4 times. Um, but that is a sign to me of a really, really good game. And ultimately, it's a very addictive game loop. If you played things like Soulsborns as well, you know pretty much how it is. You go, you die, you fail, you get addicted. You want to keep going because you want to win. You want to beat this person. You want to get the points to level up. And Hades is definitely like that through and through. Is this game actually difficult? Uh, well, there's two modes you can play it in, which is normal, which is basically no buffs. You play the game as it was made to be played, and that is goddamn hard. And next is God Mode, which basically sets you off at a 20% damage resistance at all times. So the enemies do 20% less damage, but every time you die, this buff goes up by 2%, which really changes the game. The game is quite challenging, I have to say, even with the God Mode, which I, which I have been playing it on because I'm not an absolute masochist. And I think I've read that without the God Mode, it's about an 8 out of 10, which is really pushing the limits. But with the God Mode, I would, I've read about 5 out of 10, which... I think in the late game when you have to start applying these like difficulty conditions which make the game even harder, I think you could maybe argue that it is a 6 even with that, but it's a learning curve, you know, if you think of it as by the time you get to the end game you've been playing it so much that you should be close to like having some sort of high level of skill, then maybe it isn't that difficult, maybe a 5 out of 10 is quite realistic. Now what I will say about this game is somebody who's played a lot of games, I've platinumed a lot of games, and not only that, I have looked at so many trophy lists like you know i do a trophy list review series I, I look at loads of games i look at all these trophy lists all of the time and most trophy lists are pretty darn clear here this is a really like a, it's got a trophy list which left me scratching my head when i actually looked at it for the very first time i was like this is really out of context okay i just can't place what actually some of these are what i actually have to do and i think even after playing through the game for about 15 hours i still have to look back at it a guide just to get an idea as to what i actually have to do for each trophy because they're so particular but i managed to break it down in like three steps after observing a few guides so firstly my advice is just play the game for about 25 hours over that time, just focus on leveling up Zagreus, collecting as much nectar and other collectible currencies as you can. And then next, the second stage is to work on the Fate Prophecies, that they are basically the side missions of the game, as well as some of the challenge based trophies. By step 2, you should have maybe done probably 8 to 12 full runs at this point. Finally, would be to finish all the affinities, which is basically just giving nectar to plenty of the gods that give you the boons that are in the hub world, and then after that you should have all the trophies in the game. To answer the question, do I think you should buy Hades or play Hades? Absolutely, I think it's a, it's a, it's not a one-of-a-kind game, but it's definitely a one-of-a-kind experience. I haven't played a game like this in such a long time. For me, it's just been such a breath of fresh air. The game looks beautiful, it's crisp, it's just got sharp combat, it's very varied, it's just more, it's so moorish, you know? It's like, a, it's like a cake you want to keep eating, but it's not, it's a game. You know, how can I sell it any more to you? I think most people will have a great time with Hades. The Platinum Trophy, again, is a 5 out of 10 with a god mode. To me, a 5 out of 10 involves some skill a little bit of persistence more than anything going to it knowing that it's actually going to be a game that you're going to die a lot in and when you go in with that attitude knowing that you know what if it's going to take me 60 to 80 hours to platinum this game i'm going to die a lot i might die 200 300 400 times during my time but that is part of the process so on that i'd like to thank you so much for watching this video i hope i've inspired you to play hades and i hope you enjoy it as much as i have thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take it easy